Deo Volente Farms stallion roster includes some of the top trotting stallions in North America, including Six Pack, winner of both the Kentucky Futurity and Yonkers Trot. He was named the 2018 Dan Patch three-year-old trotting cold of the year, is a three-time world record holder, and he is the fastest trotting stallion standing in North America. And now, standing at stud in Canada, is Trixton, the 2014 Hamiltonian champion by Super Sire Muscle Hill, and out of former Canadian Horse of the Year, Emily Cassell. His pedigree is unrivaled. Deo Volente Farms Premium Breeding Farm and Syndicate Management in Flemington, New Jersey. With over 30 years of experience in wealth planning and a lifetime of involvement in harness racing, Matt Franklin at Wire to Wire Wealth can help you build a financial plan that addresses the unique circumstances of those involved in the horse racing industry. Whether you are investing to build wealth, protect your family, or preserve your assets, Matt at Wire to Wire Wealth will work with you through the wealth planning process from start to finish. The world's greatest harness racing happens every Friday and Saturday night at Meadowlands Racing and Entertainment. Live racing kicks off under the lights with a 6.20 p.m. post time. Admission and parking are free. The track is also open for simulcasting seven days a week. Our FanDuel Sportsbook is also open seven days a week, and you can legally watch and wager on all your favorite sports action. Visit PlayMetalLands.com for complete racing, dining, and sports wagering information. Must be 18 or older to wager on racing, 21 plus to wager on sports. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLING. We're here today visiting Palermo Trotting Center. Sarah, I am amazed at how beautiful this facility is. You and Aki together are part owners in the facility. You put it together, you made the track, the straight track. Tell me a little bit about what uh, encouraged you to purchase this area and then also the work that went into making it the beautiful center that it is today. So we are a partner on this property with uh, Mr. Bender and his family and uh, he was a big part of our success in Sweden too as a breeder and an owner and he always loved Florida and his kind of wish and um, future dream was to have a farm in USA, Florida and they bought a house and then they went around and looked on uh, different farms and then they found this one and he called Augie and said, hi, you want to be a partner on my project? And uh, he sent some pictures and from that on it was uh, in to go and it, it was just a riding facility to start with. So we did the track and the strip and we built the, the barns um, and uh, everything has been like from scratch one a horse farm, but now it's a trotting farm facility so it's just perfect right now. Your 5 8 mile track beautiful what kind of surface do you have on there? So it's clay it has um, some specific clay substance in under it that um, uh, it's kind of easy to work with and it's very good for the horses it's a soundness track uh, at least in our eyes and beliefs so it's a, it's a good track for especially the young horses. You have a 600 meter sand track, uh, about six inches deep on sand there that I'm sure builds up muscle. Uh, it builds muscles. It's more for um, maybe the age horses, I would say three and up. So we are not using it that much. In the first two years we had a whole barn down here and then we had the age horses on it. So right now uh, uh, some other trainers are on it, but not us. So you started out, you're overseas, you have a huge stable, 220 horses, you decide to take a break, try to live more of a life, you come over with 30 horses, now you're fast forward all these years and you're up to 100 now. Uh, true, and that was maybe not the purpose of moving, like having 200 horses and family life and everything that comes with owners, employees, you, you name it, it was a big operation. And the success was just there, day out, day in, year round. So for him, 
orchid to kind of feel like I have to slow down somehow was kind of to say I'm moving. So that was maybe the only way of like slowing down with not saying I go down on horses and do less. So, and then also when you're outside the, as much as we are, Sweden is really not the place to be <laughs> with the weather. It's rain days and wind and darkness. And it's really not that enjoyable when you are outdoor as much as we are. Well, Team Svanstead is known for quality. You guys are uh, exceptional on the things you expect, exceptional care um, from the people working for you. You're very precise. Uh, tell me a little bit about how that plays into your success. I mean, it's like the ones who have kids. You, you don't send them out in rain and snow with no clothes on. I, I tell them, try to see yourself as the horse. Like, I want to have a clean water cup when I'm drinking and if I have a scarf on my leg I want it to be taken care of but they don't have hands and they can't talk so the caretakers in our way they have to really be their eyes and hands and uh, I just want the horses to be happy they, they have a tough life they have to raise and train and grow and if they don't eat they're not saying it it needs to be up to the caretaker to pay attention and say like something is going on and it's just the main part of the team to have the right people around you that want the success for the horses because it's for the horses we're doing this. So Henry Kano, Kano, am I pronouncing it? Yeah. Kano, he was the caretaker of the year two years ago. Um, and I've talked to your entire staff today. They're all friendly, they're great. They seem to be giving exceptional care. Um, is it kind of like a prerequisite when working for Svonsted Stables? Well, I mean, we try to kind of be as honest from day one. I I have run into many issues too, just because like, oh God, you can't do that. And uh, we're not used to that. And we have the European style. I think most people that have been around European trainers can say we have a different way than American trainers. And it's a give and take. Yeah, I said to Aki too, like I'm the one who have to deal most with the staff and uh, I have to give in on their way and not just ask for our way but slowly when they are in the program they see a result of it and I think that's like the key to bake it in and when they get it they understand but if they don't like it hey I can't change them so the European way you're talking about we caught up earlier in the week with Irv Miller he mentioned that he has implemented uh, training the wrong way of the racetrack, then turning around, going the, the regular set, um, the second training mile, the, the right way of the track. What benefit does that have? It's more how the horses uh, work their muscles and joints. Uh, the turns are kind of harder than the straightaway and you try to put the pressure on the both legs and they work the same sides and don't just create one way of creating their muscles so we do that too with the young horses so they get more of an even muscle workout. Let's talk about recovery Sarah. After they've done this you've put the vitamins back in through your supplements. What is the recovery period after these training miles? Uh, we have a um, high belief in to have them back out in the field uh, as fast as possible actually because uh, I have been training and many people who can probably recognize themselves with the feeling of being exhausted in the muscles and the breathing and everything and it's just nice to go out again and move your body to kind of cool off so it's more for the mental stage to feel good. Do they jog the next day or do they get a full day rest? Uh, they jog some of them it's really not a schedule on that it's more like how the groom's schedule looks like but we're trying to move them day off the training if we can. You and Aki have a great system where you're here one week, he's here one week, you guys switch back and forth. How does that benefit your stable? Uh, two eyes of the interest is uh, maybe not enough when you have 100 horses and it's a steak barn where it's like from one little thing that can be wrong and it's a lot of things to keep up with and I have 101% interest and so, so does Aki. So I think it's great that we have the interest and I have worked with him for 20 years so I know what he wants and I think it's good that I can keep up with him and say listen I see something maybe you haven't. It's, it's easy to miss when day is just rolling especially under the race season. Let's start talking about these two-year-olds. Slip sliding away out of your mare ice attraction you retained an interest of ice attraction with Alarage Farms Jeff Corral. Uh, she's beautiful. Tell me about the tell me about this 
Philly. She is just amazing to watch. She is big and gorgeous and has some nice attitude to be around to really be a girl. But uh, since day one, she has just done everything right and has a nice stride. And as of now, is no complaints. So it's very exciting to see what she's going to do. She reminds much about her mother, actually. Senorita Siete, now named Senorita Palerma, $150,000 Chapter 7 purchase, New York and Maryland from the Winback Consignment. Also a very nice filly, big, nice gate, uh, doing everything we're asking for, and it's also nice that now she has changed her name to the owners on this property. So uh, now, as of now, she's a very nice uh, filly. Warawi Michelle, a $200,000 Walner, full sister to Testing Testing, a filly. She is a fast one now, so it's just about to manage her head to not be too fast, <laughs> too early. So uh, she is also very nice gated and doing fast quarters like nothing. So it's just to keep the fingers crossed that um, she's keeping her head with it too. What are you doing to manage that? Well, the ones who show a little bit too much excitement, we have them on the helmet and trying to keep them calm and not raise them in training. And it's going to be like coming as a fast uh, step close to, the, it's going to be racing soon. So it's, it's a management to try to keep the brain calm. Sunkissed Beauty, $63,000, six pack. We talked about ice attraction. Let's talk about your boy. Uh, it's so exciting to see his babies now. He was kind of like the thing who saved our project to move here and have invest a lot of money. So having him now as a stallion and having his babies is extra. What do you think of this belly? Uh, big and it reminds him very much about him. He was very big and a little bit clumsy up to he was um, in early April. That was when he started showing some speed when we tried him out. And she's the one who reminds most of him as of now of the ones we have. Situationship, an $85,000 Chapter 7 from Crawford Farms. Also a big guy, but uh, he's coming more and more, and uh, it's interesting to see how he actually do the turns as big as he is. And uh, some of those bigger ones have a harder time, but as of now, he is just doing it as easy as no one. When you're dealing with the bigger ones, what is your what do you do? Are you looking to uh, paint? Are you looking to supplements, different kinds of therapies? Uh, you really can't change their way of growing, but some of them might not be as ready early as a two-year-old. And if they get sore, you have to back off and go more for the fall. So that's, again, you need to pay attention when they're growing and how they do the training miles and the day after. That's when you see if they can handle it. But if they are sound, it's easy for the trainers to do the work. So probably at two, these horses that are New Jersey, New York, um, you're probably not as worried about their stakes programs in the state as you are about starting them later in the Kentucky Grand Circuits? Uh, no, so Kentucky is a great place to bring the babies. They have a big, nice track, and uh, it's a perfect track to keep them sound. Sometimes maybe they go too fast, but uh, at least the next day when they... Um, go out you can see a different uh, how they take the race compared to a hard track some of them are maybe not the favorite places to go racing at with babies and that's uh, kind of the key to try to manage them to to stay sound Barra, a strong good-looking colt the second dam is the dam of Dejarnbro. this is a hundred and eighty five thousand dollar walner from the preferred consignment also a very big guy and uh, strong and uh, very fast. We have been going actually 28 with him two times uh, in quarters and he's just jogging it. So very exciting to see how he can do. Lastly, amazing catch, a $310,000 Walner from Winback. Also a gorgeous horse to look at and a little bit tempered, but uh, we have to manage that on him to stay just uh, as calm as he can be. I can see that he likes to know where the start pole is, so he knows uh, that it's uh, training time. So, uh, But he he's nothing that we can say is wrong with him. So you're spending these big prices on these colts. How do you decide when you need to cut? I, I've heard, I believe, you try to keep them stallions as long as possible. And that's what most owners want, but uh, sometimes you just have to come to a point when you see they have too many bad habits and it's going to hurt them. And if they don't 
performance too you have big pressure on to turn them into trees so it it come to when you have a trainer if they say they want to geld them it's not just for fun you say you want to geld them and if they have too much temper and it has just to be done unfortunately you're not going to maybe make any money if you keep them as colds even if they cost those high priced money right so you what does it look like now we're talking the middle of march when will these horses get home where does that go uh, we're planning to leave around april 25 mm -hmm. so uh, we have like what five six more weeks to be down here and they'll go back to the jersey farm yeah everyone ships up to new jersey so then you get them there you start training together in those sets your baby racing i assume at the meadowlands correct yes okay and then um then they'll go off throughout their different programs i know you're shipping all over to different racetracks how do you manage that with your staff and we have four guys that's um, on position that uh, kind of needs to be on call wherever they have to go racing and take care of warms up and make sure the race day is uh, in set place to be start up. But uh, I think it works good. We we try to work uh, as much as we can can together. Like uh, it's it's a tough season when you go to baby racing. You have to race at night and you sleep three hours. But we try to give and take on who is going where. So it works pretty good. How can we get lucky enough to see you drive some of these and not others? We love you driving. Oh, thank you. <laughs> well, I, uh, I will most likely drive more this year just because of the amount of horses in the barn and especially the babies. Uh, Aki thinks it's better I go with them and know where the limits are instead of we're having a stranger and they want to try them out and maybe go a couple of seconds too fast. So. I mean, being in those stake races is seconds of a shoes to do right or wrong. And those guys have 10, 14 races at night. So I don't feel I'm maybe part of that uh, success to be doing it just because I'm not driving daily. But I'm trying to get more and more into it. And they, they are kind of actually nice to drive against, I must say. I was with the amateurs. That was more excitement to do, <laughs> but do you, those races. And you know them best, you and Aki. Yeah, so, uh, and especially when you have those horses that's maybe not 100% race ready and they might need one or two more races to be where we want them to be, then I think it's nice that we can manage them, we not overdo them. Right. Well, thank you so much for taking the time. Your facility here is just amazing, and uh, I wish you continued success in 2023. Thank you so much.